When I was about 24, I worked the early morning shift as a cashier at my local McDonald's in Florida during the winter. Life was kind of what you'd expect for Florida. It's hot and humid and you'd occasionally get your brief cold fronts. I had moved down to Miami for college and attended a school just outside of the city. But seeing as I didn't have enough money for college, I had to take out a student loan and pay it off by getting a job at McDonald's, which was, and is, the worst job a person could have. Anyway, as previously mentioned, I had worked the morning shift from 4am to 9am as a cashier. I know it's not the best position in the world, but as long as the money was involved, any job was good enough. It was just me and my two co-workers, and I only considered one of them as a friend. One morning, I had arrived to the McDonald's before my other co-worker, who had the key, so I was forced to wait outside in the cold until she arrived. So, I'm leaning against my car, scrolling through Twitter and whatnot, when I see a man in a black raincoat approach the front doors. He cups his hand on the glass, looking inside, and I tell him that we were closed and that he had to come back later. He turns to face me and says, Could you please just open the door and let me inside? I just want a coffee. I tell him that we were closed once again and that we wouldn't be open for another two hours, but told him that I'd be glad to serve him later. He starts giving me this look I can't even describe. I guess it was a look of disappointment to some extent, but he then started walking away, disappearing into the night. It seemed as if he took the hint and decided not to cause any trouble. Finally, my coworker pulls in and she opens the door for us when I see the guy in the raincoat approach us again. We get inside and lock the door. When he got to the door, he starts pounding on the glass with his fists, demanding that we get his coffee. It was at that point when I realized that he was holding something behind his back, which he clearly didn't want us to see. My fear was that it was a gun, but whatever it was surely meant he was up to no good. Suddenly, I hear the glass shatter and I see him stepping into the store with a miniature axe. My heart sank into the pit of my stomach and I told my co-worker that we had to leave through the back door. She complied and we both left as this man tried to run after us. Thankfully, there was a police officer on duty on the other side of the street that saw the whole thing unfold. The officer followed us into the McDonald's with his gun drawn, but like in most situations like this, the man was gone. The glass doors had been shattered and the registers had been opened. I'm not sure if he was ever caught, but I'd like to think he was. It's been four years now and I no longer work at McDonald's. This happened about a year ago in my first semester of college. I went to art school in New York City, and my friends and I had a craving for fast food at around 12.30 a.m. We decided on the McDonald's down the street because we're classy as hell. It was me, my friend Kat, and her boyfriend, Tom. We order our food, and Kat and I decide to split a shit ton of chicken nuggets and pick a table by the door. Tom and Kat are sitting next to each other, holding hands as couples do and I'm sitting there being the awkward third wheel and gorging myself on nuggets. In walks a slightly disheveled gentleman who starts to wander aimlessly in the direction of the register. We think nothing of him at first. I watch as he goes over to order his food and turns back to my friends to chat. 
Suddenly, Cat mutters, Anna, behind you. So I turn around and there's this slightly disheveled gentleman again. This time, he's holding a flashlight. I turn back around to Cat and shrug, figuring it's just some harmless weirdo. I then feel a tap on my shoulder, so I turn around again and the guy asks, The light isn't working in the men's room. Can one of you hold this flashlight while I use the toilet? Cat, being the nice and most outgoing person of the group, responds first. Oh, well, maybe you should tell an employee that the lights don't work. I bet they could figure it out for you. I'll only be a minute, the guy mutters and holds his flashlight out to us. Could one of you just hold this while I pee? He insisted. Tom answered next as I was determined to ignore the man. No, just go ask an employee to fix the lights for you. But I'll only be... The man began again, but I interrupted him with a firm, Go away! It was a weird situation, but as we were leaving, Kat said, You know, he never went into the bathroom in the first place. How would he know the lights didn't work? When I was 16, my family and I lived in an apartment complex in a rural area outside of Chicago. Chicago was a really busy city, and neither of us liked crowded places, which is why we chose to live in a more secluded area. I had only one friend at the time named Tyler, who was just a little older than me, but still fun to hang out with. He lived a few doors down from me, and oftentimes, we'd go over to each other's places and play video games and whatnot. One night, Tyler, his girlfriend Maria, and I had just seen the new Avengers movie, one of the best films in 2019 in my opinion. Since the movie ended late, most places were closed by now and we were more hungry than ever. With no other option, we decided to hit up our local McDonald's to go grab a bite. It's not the best food to have, but we were still high school teens and we didn't have a lot of money. So, we go in, order our food, and find a table immediately. Like I said, it was well into the night, so finding a table was easy. Tyler and Maria sat next to each other like all couples do, and shared their food while I sat in front of them. While we were talking about school and stuff, I glanced behind Tyler and his girlfriend and noticed a man sitting down with nothing on his table. He's scrolling through his phone and looks up at me, and we make eye contact for a brief second before he starts to talk with Tyler and Maria. I then see him get up and start heading towards us, and I thought, oh, Great, probably another guy wanting money for drugs. He approaches our table and starts asking us if we could help him unload a few things from his car. Seeing as we were about done with our meals, we agreed to help him as we were a nice group of teens and Tyler and I were both pretty strong. We leave the McDonald's and head out into the parking lot, approaching his van. When suddenly, Tyler looks at his phone and apologizes, telling us that we had to go. The man looks at us, confused, insisting that we help him out. But Tyler ignores him and walks off with us until we were far away from the restaurant. I asked Tyler what had happened. He looked petrified and told me that when he was approaching the van, he could very faintly see two men wearing masks looking through the window. So... I've been working at what is considered to be the world's largest McDonald's chain in Orlando, Florida. To give you an idea as to how big the establishment is, we have a large play place, a whole dining area the size of a cafeteria, and a large kitchen. It sounds like your typical McDonald's, but it's a lot bigger than you think. Anyway, 
I had been working the late night shift from around 6 to 12 p.m. as I was still in college and had classes during the day. So the night shift was the only time I had been available to work. One night at around 11.30 p.m., I was finishing up my shift and we were getting ready to close, which meant that we weren't allowing any more customers. I had to use the restroom one last time before I ended my shift, and when I went into the woman's restroom, I noticed that the lights were extremely dim. After all, the lights hadn't been replaced in forever, so I did my business when it started to become ridiculously cold. It was the middle of summer and the temperature was 70 last time I checked. Then, what happened next is something that will never leave me. A loud bang came from the stall over and I instantly went pale. As I'm unlocking the stall door, I hear a faint giggle from the stall over. I didn't even dream of looking into that stall. I ran out of that restroom so fast only to end up freaking out about it to my manager. My manager went into the restroom and opened up all the stalls, but she didn't find anyone. I'm still convinced that till this day, that I was not alone in that restroom. I remember this just briefly, as this happened a long time ago, but I'll try my best to explain my story in full detail. I was 19 years old, and I just started my first year working at McDonald's as a cashier. I got paid minimum wage, so it wasn't the best job in the world, but any money was good enough for me. Anyway. I work at one of those McDonald's that have those outdoor play places, so you'd have a lot of kids coming in and out. I know most restaurant chains don't have them anymore, but this was many years ago when they were still around. So one day, I'm working the calendar and I just served the last customer as it was getting late into the day and the store was slow. I'm helping my coworker place napkins in the holders and help her fill sauces when I notice a kid talking to a man. The guy was an inappropriately dressed Latino man with shorts and a white tank top, which seemed a bit off, but people like that came in all the time. At first, I assumed it was his father or something, but that immediately checked out when I heard, Oh, m my nephew likes video games too. Let's go play with him. My blood ran cold as he said this, and as much as I wanted to confront him, I couldn't. I'm a five foot girl, and this guy looked to be well over six feet tall, so I couldn't take him on even if I tried. The man started grabbing the little boy's arm, clearly tight while heading toward the exit. Thankfully, one of the very few customers still at the McDonald's noticed this and yelled, Hey, what the hell are you doing with her son? Instantly, the man went pale and his eyes were as big as saucers. He immediately lets go and apologizes, telling him that he was just, quote, helping him find his mom, which of course is BS by now. The customer took the boy away from the man and his mom then came out of the woman's restroom, but at that point, the man was gone. She then took her kid and left, and I've never seen that man since. For God's sake, don't leave your child unattended like that. Anyway, that's my story, and I hope you can learn from it.